uh, to Paul, Paul Rowan. Um, for those of you, I'm about to give you a book a, a plug, Paul. For those of you that haven't read his book on PSD2, it really does make PSD2 very, very simple. So I would like, uh, when he comes and joins me on stage, uh, to, to welcome Paul, who will be talking to you for the next 20 minutes. And um, what I would say is settle down because he will have a huge amount of insight to share. How about that for a build up, Paul? Good morning. And thank Good you for morning, joining Adam. us. Thank you very much indeed. It's a pleasure to be here. Greetings, everyone, greetings everyone from Dublin, Ireland. Another beautiful day here. Um, so, so I think I have 20 minutes, Helen. You have. Um, you're on the other side of the Irish Sea from me. So I'm actually going to bow out now and you will see me in 20 minutes um, for some questions. Your um, slides are just coming up now. And um, as soon as they do, I will bow out. Here we go. Um, enjoy and thank you very much for joining us. Take care, Paul. Thank you. Have my slides come up? They have indeed. OK, thank you. Hi, everyone. Today I'm going to talk about um, speed in terms of differentiating your, your um, developer program. And I think it's very important because, particularly with the number of mature organizations that are trying to build uh, developer portals and developer programs, um, in mature organizations, they can be very focused on differentiation, differentiating products, differentiating services. But we're in a market that's just starting to be introduced and is starting to grow. And at times like this, the most powerful differentiator you can have is speed. So let's talk about that in a bit more detail. So specifically, I want to talk about how developer marketing is a very new discipline for incumbents particularly. And then what are developers looking for as they scan the API economy? We can get very bogged down on individual use cases, individual APIs, but more broadly, what are developers looking for? And then in terms of the financial payoffs and the growth that is available, what should you be spending on developer marketing? You know, organization spends on many different types of marketing, what quantum of spending should go into developer marketing? Then how should the funding of a new developer program be managed? This is new to a lot of organizations. It, it's in the introduction phase of a set of services with a new set of customers called developers. H how does this effort get funded, particularly inside a mature organization? Then how will the stages of market development in influence your developer marketing? All markets have an introduction phase growth phase and a mature phase and a, and a decline phase but how does the how do these stages influence what you do in your developer marketing and then a, a crude conclusion about speed which certainly looks like the one constant differentiator across all stages of market development so firstly without going into any detail and, and maybe the, the slide is a bit small to see but developer marketing is very new especially if you've been a traditional organization that tends to manufacture its own content and distributed themselves. So in that context, very different discipline. You're asking third parties to who are being treated as customers to drive innovation and growth. And you're orchestrating third parties to assist this growth and innovation rather than commanding and controlling them. So you can't tell them what to do, but they're not on payroll. So, so a very even relationship. Uh, in terms of segmentation, the beauty of digital ecosystems is that they bring you into new market micro segments that you can't reach by yourself, or it's not economic for you to reach by yourself. So, but a very new discipline in terms of market segmentation, many traditional firms have very large market segments. So many banks or insurers, banks would have corporate banking, small business banking, private banking, and consumer banking, very large market segments. The beauty of digital ecosystems is you could have millions of micro segments. And then the economics. In terms, if competition is becoming between ecosystems rather than between products, some of your spending and some of your investment is to help your ecosystem be healthy and to be the best ecosystem rather than just differentiating what you do within that ecosystem. So there's brand new communication patterns, both inside and outside the organization, assembling the API products inside the organization and then marketing them uh, and managing the relationship with both internal and external developers and with a tempo of interactions that can be 100x what has been traditional in some organizations. So for a bank, a customer might have come to a branch once a month, then you introduce mobile apps, and they might power up the mobile app once a day. As you move into digital ecosystems and have an API strategy, there could be hundreds of e uh, ecosystem interactions 
that you participate in the same time frame. So what are developers looking for? Before you get focused in on your individual APIs and individual use cases, developers are like goods companies that are looking for new markets to sell their goods in. They want to find, they want to make it easy to get started quickly in the new region because of the new industry vertical, so they can test their product in this new market. Ideally, you'll offer them gated onboarding steps, baby steps to become a registered developer on your portal, and then increasing levels of involvement. They want to tap into a vibrant community um, of complementary providers. So if you're just listening to Kuhn there from AB and Amro talking about their developer portal, and it's like a branch that engenders trust, it has an active ecosystem, and they're making announcements on their blogs every few days. So there's reassurance that they can trust the program and that there's activity levels and that there's other types of service providers that will provide network effects around the solution they're offering using the API product. You're offering pay as you use so that it's low cost, as low cost as possible to enter into a new region or industry vertical. And you're offering the precise service that the developer wants as they want it. So again, speed of response, baby steps, incremental involvement, fast response, fast reaction. So focus on speed as a differentiator before you get very obsessed around individual APIs, individual use cases, individual developers. This, this is, there's an army of developers increasingly scanning the world, looking for APIs that will enrich their experiences, that will increase their opportunity, and they're going to become increasingly skillful at, at detecting those developer programs that are committed and active and responds very quickly and accurately to their feedback. How much should you spend on developer marketing? Some very interesting research just come out from MIT Sloan, always get great research from one of the world's leading universities. And they've identified that companies whose dominant business model is ecosystem driver experience revenue growth approximately 27% percentage points higher than average for their industries and had profit margins 20% higher than the average for their industries. It sounds a bit abstract, but in some very big banks that I talk to, when we plug this type of uh, improvement into their return on assets, for example, the answer that drops out the bottom is an extra billion euros a year in profitability for the larger banks. So in that context, the research is showing and it's identifying big impacts on profitability there's nothing any bank is doing on their own brand app around improving the services on their own brand app or, or using digital technologies to improve their costs inside the organization that's going to increase their margins by 20%. So if you're championing and evangelizing for your developer program inside your organization, very good question to ask. If the potential gain, for example, is a 20% increase in profit margin, in a mature organization that moves towards using an ecosystem powered by APIs to drive growth and innovation, what percentages is the best estimate of your developer marketing spend as a percentage of your total marketing spend? So I speak to many banks and some of them say they're totally committed to the API economy and digital ecosystems and they love what APIs can do. And they're delighted to see the research that talks about these huge breakthroughs in profitability. And when I ask them how much, what percentage of their, their bank's total marketing spend is developer marketing, it's definitely not a double digit answer. So part of that marketing spend is the funding of the new developer program. So how should the funding of the new developer program be managed? Well, it's, a, it's an internal corporate venture. So, so when we talk about joint ventures, joint ventures often is, is, is associated with an incorporated joint venture which the effort that goes in when two enterprises have an incorporated joint venture, the effort is not reusable. It's very slow to market. There can be a clash of cultures between the two enterprises contributing staff to the joint venture. It takes extensive pre-planning before it actually reaches the market. If it doesn't work out in the market, there's very high barriers to exit because you have to shut down an organization. And all of the inputs that you used, it's incredibly hard to refine them for other purposes. And it's hard to refine the purpose of the joint venture as, as, as it experiences feedback from the market. Having a developer program is like having hundreds and hundreds of micro level joint ventures. 
but it's unincorporated, it's fast to market, it's contracted through API documentation, it's reusable with hundreds of partners, and it's a joint venture at the level of a digital customer journey. So it's achieving the exact same thing as an incorporated, clumsy, rigid joint venture, but it's right down at the level where the customer is. It's giving you access into new markets. It's allowing you to share risks with your development partners. You can gain, gain scale efficiencies with your development partners, and you can access skills and capabilities that your development partners have that aren't present inside the bank or the financial services provider. So developer program has hundreds of mini micro level joint ventures, much more flexible, reusable, fast to market, automated partner onboarding, low barriers to exit that can find unanticipated opportunities. So everything that you hope for in a joint venture without all of the waste and rigidity and non-reusable nature. So it has all of this. So therefore it needs to be funded like this. You need to have a developer acquisition phase that you refine towards profit. You're, you're, you're running through those hundreds of mini joint ventures to find the really powerful scalable partnerships that can drive your growth and innovation. So how will the stages of market development influence developer marketing? Well, there's lots of payoffs from a developer program and you're looking for size in the number of developers. So if you're listening to ABN AMRO just now, they're tracking the milestones that they're hitting and how they're moving up, up across and to the right in terms of the quality and quantity and diversity uh, of their developer program, the enrichment of their developer program. And they're driving the payoffs of size, time to first API use in terms of speed, diversity, the word of mouth. You, you can have a net promoter score for your developers because your developers are customers. They're looking at activity, the number of API calls. They're looking for direct monetization. And Mark Boyd earlier on was talking around the huge increase in direct API monetization achieved by Starling Bank over a two year period from 5,000 pounds to 1.5 million. And there's reciprocity in terms of also building reciprocal relationships because when you see high volume API consumption by your partners, there's also the opportunity to see where is the APIs being produced by those partners that you could consume into your digital experiences because part of the growth and API calls to you can be shared customers. And then the number of customer journeys, where is that increased of 20% above average in margins and the increase that MIT Sloan found in terms of revenue growth of 27% above industry average. It comes from 10xing the number of customer journeys you can participate in because you have a vibrant, active, diverse, large API program. So, but there are stages of market development. So when people talk about API first, that API first mentality has to, has to evolve as you go through these stages. So API first in the early days is, is putting in a meaningful range, a table stakes range of API products based on your initial judgment of what will be valuable for developers. And then in the growth phase, as you start to get size and activity and word of mouth from your developer program, you're starting to get very meaningful feedback that allows you to refine and extend the table stakes APIs. And then inside your bank or company, you're starting to insist that all, all development efforts inside your organization need to be designed to be externalized as APIs. And then as you move towards a highly mature stage of API first, where you're focused on direct monetization and diversity into all market segments and reciprocity from your partners in terms of using their APIs in return, at that stage inside your organization, you're insisting that all existing products and services should be API enabled by all teams because your API program is becoming the main shop window of the bank, both internally and externally, of how you participate in innovation, both inside the organization and within the broader ecosystem. So coming back again to speed, speed is the one constant differentiator across all stages of market development. And an obsession with quality and differentiation means that you might produce a wonderful API 
that's very useful to a handful of partners every few months, but you've engendered low levels of trust and activity in your developer portal. There's too long between announcements. There's too little diversity and activity. There's too little reciprocity. There's too little shared education. In reality, the successful developer programs are the ones that are generating a big feedback loop from that big ecosystem of partners who are looking from the outside in back into your organization and coaching you on how to improve your APIs and more importantly, how to improve the data and services that you're making available into those APIs. So API first, but with speed and a focus on, you might be measuring different things at the stage of market entry. So in, in, in the int introduction to any market with your brand, you're trying to get active, you're trying to get visible, you're trying to get turnover, you're trying to get feedback so you can refine what you're doing. So for the mature organization, it's speed of consumer engagement, both inside and outside, but primarily outside the organization, and then speed of API producer engagement. If you're a multi-divisional bank, you know, give fast responses to your internal divisions if you want them to stay engaged in producing data and services with an API first mindset that can reach the market. When you're in the growth phase and you're measuring different things or focusing on different things, again, carry it out at speed in terms of reacting to external feedback, reacting to internal feedback within inside the organization, and then maturity, speed of API consumer engagement, speed of API producer engagement. And then based on everything, what we've heard today and what we're seeing in the market, it'll be a long time, a very, very, very long time before API days has to concern itself, I suspect, with decline phase. So you're looking for speed to that 100x. So if you're a bank, it used to be once a month, then you had your own mobile apps, it used to be once a day or once every couple of days. Now you're heading to the world where you want 100x interaction with your customers through the ecosystem and the way to gather the partners and gather the ecosystem around you, the most important differentiator of what you do is the speed with which you react to the feedback that you're getting, both inside and outside the organization. Okay, that's me. Are there questions at this stage? Well, it took me a little while to get back on stage with you. Thank you for treading water there. There aren't, actually. So um, um, I, I do have a question, though. Um, obviously, you know that I'm involved uh, very heavily in, in open banking. I would like yeah. your perspective, given that I gave your book a plug from sort of PSD2, which was the backdrop for open banking starting. I'd like your perspective on where open banking is going into open finance. Do you have any sort of pearls of wisdom to share or just some insights? I think open finance is very interesting, especially with the aspects around pensions. Um, you know, sometimes open banking can be associated with the younger generation. But if you think of a pensions dashboard where all of those pension funds would be asked to, to make a data feed available so that people who might have 11 jobs in their entire career, and as they're accelerating their retirement planning, are trying to figure out what all of those different little pension pots are worth uh, and what sort of a funding gap they might have and how this might influence their investment approach. I think when you see those type of developments, you can see that this is becoming mainstream in terms of public policy. And when you see the number of countries that, are, that have a pensions problem in terms of, of life expectancy, I think it's interesting to see both the scope of open innovation business models extending inside a pioneering country and the number of, of uh, countries that are looking at open and extending open banking regulations. Mm. But what I would say is that open banking by its nature can only ever be a catalyst. So governments and regulators can signal that they approve of this type of ecosystem business model because it helps bring services into smaller micro segments, underserved segments, that it, it, it is, is highly aligned with where public policy wants to go. But ultimately, regulators or governments can only imagine a few use cases. And they cannot, the only reason they're imagining a few use cases is that they can work out 
what the conduct rules should be if things go wrong and what the levels of education should be. The huge excitement for everybody in digital ecosystems is the sheer number of things you can do, the number of options it gives you for business strategy, the number of options it gives you around partnering. So, so at this stage, any bank that is still taking their cue from regulation inside banking is missing the bigger picture, which is Agreed. open innovation business models is way beyond any individual industry vertical. And the competition that's coming is coming across industry verticals as customers want these connected customer experiences with multiple contributors from multiple verticals. So the, the regulations are fantastic in terms of pointing the way and establishing the conduct rules, the basic conduct rules, but any services organization that thinks that APIs are something that you're only forced into is really at risk of missing a very big picture. I couldn't agree with you more. It's always an interesting debate, um, whether it's market-led or regulatory-led. Um, I'm absolutely with you. Now, we do have one question um, from Simon, who was our keynote speaker this morning. Simon has asked in chat, and please, everybody, do, do use the chat. Uh, what companies can we learn from in terms of speed of development, developer even, sorry, engagement? So going back to your presentation, what companies can we learn from in terms of speed of developer engagement? Thank you, Simon. Um, well, well, I referred to, to what ABN AMRO are doing at the moment, and, and Kuhn was showing the results that they're having in terms of the impact of their developer program. But if I was asked to point out, to, to, to bring a banker uh, to their developer portal and point something out, you can point out things like, you know, the they're doing, uh, you know, event type APIs where you can actually get notifications of individual types of transactions on your account. And that's highly differentiated, highly differentiated banking service that is entirely suitable to the API economy. But I, I tend to point first at the frequency with which there's an announcement uh, on the blog. Because what does that say? The team there running the portal are funded and supported to treat the developers as a customer base and to maintain a consistent active level of customer engagement. So the key metrics I'll be looking for is speed. And in that context, the fact that they're making an announcement every few days, and not like, like any other business, not every announcement is equally impactful. Not every announcement or event or activity or advice or reference site or use case is equally as equally as impactful as a fabulous new API mm -hmm. product. What it says is they recognize that this is a strategic distribution strategy. And in the early stages, there's also a venture funding element to it in that they're clearly as interested in developer acquisition and developer education as they are in the, mo the superior developers that generate high digital footfall, high banking transactions. Paul, thank you. Can you answer this next question in like 30 seconds or, or a minute? Because they're now, sure. now coming in. Uh, that was fascinating. I personally could listen to, to you all day. Um, okay, so from Anastasia, can you elaborate, please, on how to measure the number of extended customers, customer experience? Um, oh, can, can you elaborate on how to measure the number of extended customer experience? Hmm. Well, well I, I think what the question refers to is, yeah. is analytics in that in that I suppose traditionally API gateways were something inside an organization that were designed to, to organize middleware and do integrations between internal, internal um, activities. The, the, the move towards the API economy means that you can have a discipline and an objective and a team that's geared towards speed of response but ultimately, you're also going to have to prioritize where you respond quickly. And in that context, you need to have high analytics capability in terms of what are APIs being used? How are they being used? And you can detect that both inside your API management platform, but also go out there into the world and, and go into the third parties that are using your APIs and go on those customer journeys yourself and see how, you can, how your organization contributes to that extended customer journey. But, but ultimately, it's to give yourself the, the marketing analytics 
to treat this entire environment as a strategic marketing platform. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the analytics are crucially important. Interesting. Absolutely fantastic. And I mean, interesting just doesn't sum it up. Paul, a huge thank you from me and everybody at API Days. Uh, I, for one, will be uh, re-listening to your, your presentation and, and looking at your deck again. Paul, enjoy the rest of your time at API Days. I'm just curious to which track you're going to follow next, but um, whatever it is, have, have a, a lovely rest of day. And thank you very much for joining us, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, everyone.